Hi, I'm Bill Wild of Assured Research. Thanks so much for joining this quick hit video where we're going to focus on one uh, one research note drawn from a recent uh, content produced by Assured Research. This from our October Assured Briefing. Uh, we're going to focus on a uh, recent uh, interesting study of, or uh, survey, I should say, of CEOs, public, publicly traded companies. Um, CEOs were asked a, a host of questions about risk and opportunities. We're going to focus on the opportunities because we love a good growth story at Assured Research. So bear with me and I'll Let's share my screen and we'll jump right into it. There we go. All right. So we have uh, at Assured Research for quite some time, now I'll get it right. Uh, had as in fact a founding principle I'm going to share it here uh, directly uh, we've been saying for over a decade now that we think the demand for property casualty insurance prop, uh, products is too frequently taken for granted and that the the, uh, the corollary to that is that fi financial benefits will accrue to those who research changes in the demand for insurance and react accordingly. So we're uh, frequently in our work, we look for opportunities to highlight business development topics, try to use interesting tools, though readily available tools to surface those, and of course, you know, offer it up to our subscribers as, hey, here's an opportunity for you to, to uh, take this uh, take this handoff, as it were, and, and, and take the ball down the field. So here's one one idea kind of uh, typical of, of some of this business development work and we're looking at the combination of uh, the I think 1.2 trillion dollars uh, of expenditures authorized in the 2021 infrastructure act combined with the um, the post pandemic uh, trend toward onshoring reshoring um, strengthening supply chains uh, you've heard all of those, but when you put them all together, it creates insurance opportunities. So on the left, we're showing construction uh, construction spending in manu on manufacturing facilities. And look at the way that was flat for a decade um, uh, before, the, uh, before the Infrastructure Act, and it's really increased rapidly um, since then spending on manufacturing facilities. On the right-hand side, one category of manufacturing facilities that's really seeing an explosion of growth is uh, is uh, the semiconductors, the, uh, the chips, um, and you know, in, in combination with the CHIPS Act of, I think, 2020, 20, 2022, you can see that all the facilities across the U.S. where there's either uh, a, a new plant under construction or one is planned or there's an expansion. Now, you might reasonably say, hey, that's interesting, but our company doesn't offer the products that those manufacturing facilities, um, whether general or the chips specific, we don't offer what they need. Maybe you do, and that's great. But, but even if you don't, that's okay too, because a whole infrastructure develops uh, around these uh, plants. In fact, that's uh, nearly a quote from an article in the, the Wall Street Journal mid-September um, where one of the, uh, uh, somebody who was purchasing land around these manufacturing facilities said effectively want, we want to create a, you know, an entire urban ecosystem around these plants, right? People moving there, new employees need housing, they need schools, they, you know, that which creates uh, demand for specialty trade contractors. Uh, people want to be able to go out to dinner and have other, uh, use other services. So you get it. There, the point is that you can pinpoint some of the, you know, where these manufacturing facilities are being built or planned. It takes you know, many years oftentimes for them to, to ultimately um, um, be constructed and in that time there's lots of other growth opportunities uh, we're fortunate at assured research to uh, to enjoy a partnership with Verisk's market stance business unit um, they have the tools that allow you to combine as we show here very granular looks at specific industries down to the six digit NAICS code I think here we're showing the three digit um, in very specific metropolitan statistical areas we're comparing comparing Boise with Detroit and Phoenix and Pittsburgh and premium forecasts and specific lines of insurance uh, for specific trades, um, uh, because we picked picked those four. Uh, because in two, Boise and Phoenix, uh, they're enjoying the uh, the fruits of uh, some of this uh, the governmental spending and and private spending to create these facilities. Detroit and Pittsburgh aren't now. 
we're not going to engage in a micro analysis here. There's lots of different reasons that uh, uh, for the, the forecasted growth opportunities that are shown. The point is really more to show a, a demonstrate a thought process and, and show what's uh, what's available. Uh, you know when you have the uh, have your have the right tools. So that's what we have for you. There's plenty more or other uh, responses about risks and opportunities commented on by the CEOs. We explore those in the research note. Uh, encourage you to reach out if you're not a subscriber. We'd be happy to start you on a trial to our work if you want to receive this note and, and others for a few months. If you're already a subscriber, we thank you and uh, thanks to everybody for your interest in this. Have a great rest of your day.